Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight and uh, listening to our uh, Wednesday night service here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We want to thank you so much for uh, tuning in to us, uh, whether it be Facebook Live, internal broadcasting, or uh, telephone. We appreciate you tuning in, and uh, uh, just like us, we're ready to receive a blessing tonight. Uh, we want to go ahead and start off with a few announcements that we have. Uh, just want to let you know, keep you informed, that Timberlake Baptist Church will be live streaming uh, Sunday school this Sunday at 9.45. And also we'll be uh, streaming morning worship service at 11 a.m. and also Sunday night service at 6 p.m. Uh, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, BBI will be available online Friday morning. Uh, we, we encourage students to check your inbox and the link will be sent and that will be available this Friday. Also, uh, please send us your prayer request via Facebook or our contact page on Eternal Broadcasting. And when Ken Vipperman comes up here to pray tonight, uh, we'll be uh, glad to uplift your needs in prayer tonight. Uh, with all that being said, we're going to go to our prayer list and let's have a good season of prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day you give us, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending the only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. We thank you so much for that. Lord, we just thank you so much for waking us up, Lord, this morning and just be able to serve you. Lord, we ask you just to please be with us all and bless us and just help us to continue to fulfill your will for our lives, Lord. Lord, as we come to our prayer list tonight, Lord, we ask you to please meet every need, Lord, and just uh, answer each one according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we ask you to please be with Pastor Yancey, Lord. We ask you to please be with him and bless him uh, as he leads our church, Lord. I just pray you just bless his health and just help him just to continue to grow in you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please continue to be with uh, the church attendance, Lord. Pray that just continue to grow in you. Also, be with our tithing and giving, Lord. I pray you just uh, uh, allow us all just to give you our time, talents, and treasures that you're used, Lord, and just uh, you uh, use them in a mighty way. Lord, we ask you to please be with our deacons and trustees. We ask you just to please touch them in a mighty way, Lord, and just uh, answer all their needs according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we ask you to continue to be with our new building. Uh, we pray that we uh, get on that new land soon, Lord, and just uh, do bigger and better things for you out there. And, Lord, we ask to sell this property. We pray that in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray that you send the right person at the right time, Lord, uh, just to uh, buy this building and so that we can uh, get out there sooner, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to do with the Blair Construction Lords as they continue to work on their plans. Uh, we pray that just everything just goes smoothly, Lord, and you bless it all. Uh, be with Mike Maracus, Lord, our architect, Lord, as we continue to uh, work with that. We ask you to please bless him and allow everything to go uh, great, Lord. But we ask you to please be with internal broadcasting, Lord. We ask you to please bless that ministry. We ask you just to uh, continue to let it grow and let it uh, uh, reach more people, Lord, for you. May we continue to ask you to please be, please be with our WTBI broadcast. We ask you to please bless that ministry as well and just allow it just to grow and reach many souls, Lord. Uh, please be with Bible Believer. 
uh, be a Leavers Bible Institute, Lord. We ask you just to please uh, be with every student, Lord. Just help us just to grow in you, Lord, and be with every teacher, Lord, and just give us the right, uh, give them the right words to say at the right time, Lord, so we can open up your word and just grow closer to you. Lord, we ask you to please be with all our Sunday schools and teachers, Lord. We pray you just bless each class, Lord, and just help each one to grow uh, and uh, be with all the teachers as well, Lord. Lord. We ask you to please be with our youth ministry, Lord. We pray that you bless every kid, Lord, and just uh, help them just to walk in your ways, Lord, and bless all the teachers there as well. But we ask you to please be with children's churches, Lord. We ask you to please uh, uh, be with the teachers and children, Lord, and just uh, help them just to grow in you and just help that uh, group just to grow in you. We ask you to please be with Tuesday Bible study, Lord. We ask you to bless that ministry as well and just uh, help that to grow and help people to learn in your word. Lord, tonight we ask you to please be with the peace of Israel, Lord, and the elections and the president and nation and economy, Lord. We ask you just to please... Uh, Bless every person, Lord, and just help us just to uh, fix our eyes completely on you, Lord, and just put a hedge of angels around us, Lord, and just protect us, God, we pray. Lord, we ask you to please be with the coronavirus outbreak, Lord. We ask you just to please, Lord, just uh, bless every person that's infected, Lord, and just ask you just to please touch them and bless them in a mighty way, Lord, and just uh, help them to be healed soon, Lord. And we ask you just to please uh, be with every person, Lord, and just uh, bless them as well. Lord, please be with the conflicts in Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria, Lord. We pray you just uh, bless them, Lord, and just uh, help our soldiers come back soon, Lord, and just uh, bless them and uh, bless their safety. Lord, please be with our visitors and new converts. We ask you just to please uh, bless them and just help them uh, just to, uh, get founded in your word, Lord, and just help them just to fulfill your will for their lives. Lord, tonight as we come to our uh, salvation list tonight, Lord, we ask you to please just save each and every single person on this list, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just send the right person with the gospel ready to give them their lips, Lord. And I pray that these people will humbly accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we ask you to please be with Carl Amos, Brandon and his parents, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy Connor, Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, has cancer as well, Lord, bless him. Uh, Robert Deer, Lester Dotson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dudden, Heather, Jesse Horvath, Brandon Godsey, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Caitlin, Billy Keene, Mike Keene, Stephen Keene, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis, my co-workers, Sean McCall, Darren Moore, Danielle Owen, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark Reagan, Brian Reagan, Caitlin Sanchez, Victor Sanchez, Sean and Bobby Stout, Kimberly Thompson, Madeline Thompson, Megan Thompson, Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young, Lord. We ask you to please save their souls, Lord, and just uh, bless them in a mighty way. Lord, we ask you to please be with the people that need to get back in church, Lord. I just pray you just touch them, Lord, just remove all hindrances. Uh, excuses, Lord, and just help them run back to your house and get uh, back right with you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with Judy Bryant, the Clary family, Carol Golden, Cassie and family, DJ and Chelsea, Gary Graham, Tracy Inman, Mike and Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed, and Daisy Tickle, Lord. We ask you to please be with them, Lord, and just bless them and help them to grow back in you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please uh, be with the remainder of this uh, prayer list, Lord, and just please be with tonight's service, Lord. And we pray that many souls are saved and lives are changed tonight, Lord. We love you and thank you for all you do. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again, Father, for the opportunity to be in your house tonight, Father. And Father, we have many health needs we need to lift up to you tonight. Father, we lift up uh, Larry Bryant and his heart, Austin Begley, Benny Begley, Pamela and Sarah Bryant. Pray you'll be with Sarah. She had surgery today, Father, and touch your body, Father, and restore health. Uh, be with Benjamin Bryant, Vicki Burnett and her heart, uh, Vicki Burnett's brother, Jay Campbell and his eyesight. Be with me and my muscle on my foot. Tony Dalton, who also has seizures, Lori Dove, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, John Farmer, who's recovering from surgery, Danny Goat, who's in Sova, Amy Grafton, who has leukemia, who's taking chemo, Faith Ann Holly with her knee and foot, I believe with Ronald Hazelwood, Barbara Hines in her back, Virginia Pines, who's in hospice, Gene Henderson, who's in Sova, Sean Horbert Sr., and his health needs, Audrey Hoskins, Alan Johnson with his hip replacement, Maureen Johnson, David Jones, please, please play with his blood pressure, uh, Ruth Jones, who's in Carillion, Gary and Gail Kilby, Buster and Jamie Lewis, Chelsea Lynch, Gary and Kathy McCullough, Angeline Merriman, who's at home, uh, Billy Loveless, Zachary Loveless, Bud Martin, Danny Martin, Toby Moore in his knee, Stan Moorefield in his shoulder, Gene Moss, Angie and Billy Oaks, Kendall Oaks, 
Donald Owen, Alfredo Patterson, Alan Cheryl Podobisky, Jimmy and Ann Pruitt, Shirley Shive, Carl Stamer, Bonnie Raines, and Robert Reed. Also be with Cindy Rutherford and Gracie Roberts, Wayne Royster, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Edna Earl Shelton, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Alan and Shirley Taylor, Ricky told him his eyesight, Ken and Angie Vipperman, Paul Underwood, Anita Ward with the foot and back, Pilar Waddell, Garland Watson and Preston Watson, Leon and Connie Wiles, Chris Wilson who burned his leg, Lois Witt, Harold Yancey, Ryland and Betty Yates, and Amy Young. We pray for all of you. We stand and comfort each one of these, Father. Take care of their needs. Wrap your loving arms around them. Let them feel your presence, Father. We pray, Father, tonight also for those that have diabetes. Pray you be with Rod, Ron Allen, Scott Baker Barker, Sherry Bray, Eli Gord, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Raines, Lee Raines, Wayne Royster, Danny Warwick, and Wendy Yancey. We pray, Father, you'll help each of these individuals with diabetes. You'll pray, pray Father, you'll help them control their blood sugar so they can do what they need to do for you and their families. We also pray for those with COPD tonight. I pray for uh, Pamela Dabbs, who also has had hip surgery, for Ruth Jones and Mike Mills. We also want to pray for, those, pray for those that have Alzheimer's and dementia. We lift up Ronnie Durham and Mary Malone and Amanda Watson. We pray, Father, you be with each one of these individuals. Touch the caregivers that are looking after them, Father, and give them kindness and, and give them the uh, care they need, Father. We pray now, Father, you be with uh, everything else on this prayer list tonight. Everything is said and done. Be to your honor and your glory. We have asked these things in your name. My Father in heaven, Lord, I pray for all those who have cancer that you just touched their body. Let your will be done as far as either healing them or uh, just be with them, touch them. Pray for Joni Atkins, pray for Petroya Atkins, Bobby Allen, Allie Cohen, Aurora Axfaz, Patty Baldridge, David Bale, skin cancer, Robin Baker, Francis Bird's daughter, Tammy Cox, Tom Barley, Raylan Bowen, Calvin Bryan, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Pat Dalton, Vernie Dawson, Brenda Davis, Chris Davis, Thompson Dix, Kellen Dunn, Miss Tom Farrell, Jeremy Ferguson, Amanda Gladder, Jesse Glasscock, Sherry Gr Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Lola Harper, Judy Hayes, Jimmy Hazelwood, Karen Hilton, James Holt, James Horsley, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Jesse Jones, Tina Lindsay, Jason Long, Wendy McGuire, Benny Montgomery, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, John Rice, Patricia Robertson, Hope Rodriguez, Neil Rogers, Margaret Saxon, Sylvia Siegler, Braylon Stevens, Cindy Sawyers, Frank Wilkerson, Albert Wilson. Lord, pray for all the ones who are in the nursing home. Just be with them. Pray for Dale Lefter. Pray for Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Curtis Martin, Ruth Newman, Joyce Thomas, Diana Wagner, Francis Robertson, Bill Thompson, Kathy Cole, and Ruby McGee. I pray for Vidal Crane, Michelle Johnson, and Gladys Smiley. Lord, I pray for all these unspokens, that you answer their unspokens, and just meet them according to their need. Beverly Baker, Connor Barnett, Lindsey Baxter, Austin Beggarly, Raymond Cleary, Compton Family, Chad Gossie, Manny Graham, Tia Harrison School, Sean Teresa Horvath, Ariel Hicks School, Tammy Hicks, Janice Hodges, Angela Johnson, Angeline Johnson, Essen Lewis, Evan Lewis, Shelby Martin, Christy McBride, Angeline Merriam, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Kelsey Moore, Sean Patterson, Bonnie Raines, Daniel Roach, Vicki Reed, Daisy Tickle, Daryl Tickle, Glenn Tickle, Eileen Tickle, and Mike and Leslie Tickle, Stephen Carroll Tickle, Tori Underwood School, Evelyn Wallington, Matthew G. Williams, and Tony Wilson. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray last night. Lord, I just want to thank you for the privilege that we have to worship you. I want to thank you, God, for everyone listening to us right now, and just pray that you would just make this um, unusual time just a blessing to them. We do ask, God, that you be with our missionaries that we support here at our church. We ask that you would just give them every resource necessary that your word can be given out in whatever area they're in. 
We ask that you would just watch over and protect them and be with them. We lift up to you tonight, Eddie Aleph and Randy Ashcraft. We ask you, God, to be with Govinda Awale, the Bethel Baptist Missions, as well as Ken Ream, Emmanuel Bala, and the Christian Law Association. We lift up to you, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, as well as John and Mavis Coleman, Mike and Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Joseph Delph. We ask you to be enough, Chris Giacomo, Garvin Dykes, Evangelist Noah Fry, and Virgil Galan. We ask you, God, to please bless Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, as well as Lewis Howell, Patrick Hubbard, Frank and George Kinsey, Nessa Lubiugan and Jimmy Long. We lift up to you, Sergio Mahanos, Ernie Mills, as well as Nathan Miller, Tamar Mock, and Amron Allen Nye. We ask you also, God, to be with Mike Patterson, Mike Petkoff, and David Ralston. We lift up to you our national pastors, both, both in Cuba and Pakistan. We ask you to be with Dan Reichert and Jay and Elizabeth Roberts and Demetrio Rodrigo. We ask you, God, to please uh, touch the Roloff Children's Homes, Jason Sobel, David Wise, and Jeff Worley. And also, God, we ask you to be with several pastors and evangelists in our area and the region that either pastor their own church or go out and evangelize at the churches. We just ask, God, that you would just give them all the right messages and sermons that they need to say, say in order to see the souls come to know Christ as their Savior. We lift up to you Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, and Bobby Brooks. We ask you, God, to be tonight with Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, and Jeff Chapman. Father God, we ask you to be with Scott Deans, Carlton Duck, Chris Desterline, and Larry Fitzgerald. We ask you to be with Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, Paul Forrest, Josh Gentle, and Donnie Glass. God, also be with Frank Gooch, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry Johnson, Stephen Kennedy, Tim Kaiser, and Terry St. John. And also, God, please be with Steve Lamb, Bobby Lee, Joel Logan, as well as Carol Martin, John Mitchell, Dave Peters, and Dan Snelling. And also, God, please be with David, Davy Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, J.D. Serball, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. Father, we ask you to be tonight with the family of Jack Eccles, Lord, and the time of their loss. We just ask, God, that you would just place your comforting arms around them like no one else can and ask them just to be with them in this time of need. Father, we ask that you would just bless the remainder of this streaming service and to ask that you would, Lord, bless our pastor, give him the words that we all need to hear tonight. But most importantly, Lord, if someone listening or someone watching this recording does not know Christ their Savior, may the night be the night or the day of their salvation. We're thankful, God, for everything you do for us. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, just want to give you a couple more announcements that we got coming up. I know that um, it's kind of unusual to be in this uh, scenario. Um, I'm looking at four people. That's basically it. So we're well under the government mandated 10 limit. But keep in mind that these lights, the Internet, and all these bills are going to keep coming. So we just ask that you would just uh, remind you to um, send in your tithes and offerings to um, us. There is an address that we have available for that. It's P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543 and you can um, put on it for Timberlake Baptist Church. Also, it is about 15 minutes old. We do have available on our website, on strengthfortoday.com, the capability for you to send in your tithes and offerings online. It is um, safe. It's, um, it's through a secure website that our bank uses. So keep that in mind also that you'll be able to do at any time that you wish, uh, be able to give uh, tithes and offerings to either Wednesday night, the radio program, any of them. So that's all listed in there, which ones you can do. So we just strongly urge you to, to go ahead and do that. And then with that, we're going to go ahead and show a special uh, video um, from a group coming up, Wilburn and Wilburn. Go ahead. No matter what you're going through in your life, no matter where you come from, Jesus Christ is still the answer. Christian, I know you're discouraged. Well, there have been in difficult days, Thank you. but even though trouble is stirring, there is hope if we just keep the faith. The good news still outweighs the bad news. God's word is the truth we can claim, and in the world. Nothing is 
Down. That's Wilburn and Wilburn. They're going to be with us on the first Sunday in June for our 30th anniversary homecoming here at Timberlake Baptist Church. So I felt this is a good opportunity to get you all to know who Wilburn and Wilburn are. And they'll be with us in just a few months just down the road. Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. We're going to continue the message we stand. When we stand, the victory is ours. But while you're turning in your Bibles, let me remind you, those who are on Facebook, you can uh, send Ken a note at any time. Make sure he knows that you're out there. And uh, if you don't tell us, we don't know, if, especially if you've got privacy settings. We won't know you're out there. We want to know that you're out there listening. So let us send him a message and let him know that you're out there listening to our services tonight here at Tim Lake Baptist Church. If you're listening by way of eternal broadcasting, you can go to our contact page and leave us a message and let us know that you're listening as well. And those by phone, we thank you for tuning in by the phone, whatever way you're coming tonight. When we stand, the victory is ours. We talked about last Wednesday night, stand with your eyes clear to see God's vision. Stand with your eyes clear so you can see what God wants you to do. We talked about see the Savior. Bethlehem, Calvary, all of this tells, oh, what a Savior is mine. Thank God that he saw the Savior. Joshua saw the Savior standing there. And we you know he's also the secure. We said that means to comfort or to soothe. He's the one who will soothe us and comfort us. Boy, we need that during these days we're in right now, right in the middle of this coronavirus. We need God to comfort us and calm our fears. But he's also the subduer. Thank God he's in control. And he'll subdue our enemies, and he'll give us the victory. Now tonight, we're going to talk about stand with your eyes clear. I'm sorry, your ears clear. <laughs> your ears clear to hear God's voice. To hear what the Lord has to say. Not only do we need to see him, but we need to hear him. We need to hear that still, small voice of God speaking to our heart through his word. We need to listen to what he's saying to us and pay attention 
His words are important. God's more important than E.F. Hutton. When God speaks, everybody should listen. No one facing defeat can afford to miss the, the voice of God, the blessed voice of the Lord. Right now, we're in the middle of a crisis in our country like we've never seen before. And we need to listen to the Lord. It's a time now to come and be still and know that he's God and let him speak to our hearts, especially in a world of so many voices. Today, I finally just cut the news off and quit listening because nothing they had to say was encouraging. Nothing was uplifting. And I turned on a preacher friend of mine and listened to him preach and got a better attitude. Don't let the voices of this world infiltrate your mind through your ears and destroy your faith in God. Because, listen, nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing catches him off guard. He knows everything that's going on. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8 says this. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. There's a purpose behind everything everybody says. So we need to listen to God because he knows we care. He knows we love him. We know his trumpet is not an uncertain sound. We know his trumpet is certain. It's pure. It's true. And it will be faithful. Folks, we need during these times to look to God and look in his eyes and know that he loves us and that nothing is going to happen to his children beyond his control. The Bible also says in John chapter 18, verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto them, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered and says that I am a king. This end, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, listen to this now, heareth my voice. Folks, those who love God, hear God. And we need to love him with all our heart, all, all our soul, and all our mind. We must stand with our ears clear to hear the true voice of God in heaven who will never lie to us. China lies. We know that. We're finding that out. Sometimes the federal government lies. Sometimes the state of Virginia lies. But Jesus never lies. He always tells the truth. His word is the yea and amen of it all, and we can trust him. Tonight, as we stand with our ears clear to hear the voice of God, first of all, A, the voice was one of challenge. Boy, we certainly are challenged today. I'm challenged tonight. It's hard to preach to the Wood family. It's hard to preach to a bunch of pews. But thank God I know behind that camera there there's a lot of people listening out in the world. Thank God for that. But it's a challenge, just the same, to preach to an empty building. But God knows how to help us meet those challenges. And the Bible says in Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? What saith my Lord? What's your command, God? What will you have me to do? I know as all this began to unfold over the weekend and we began to face uncertain times and decisions you have to make and changes you have to make, I asked God, Lord, what would you have me to do in this time of challenge? How do we meet this challenge? How do we do our best? And you have to rise to the challenge sometimes because the world's going to give you lemons, but you've got to make lemonade out of it. But God's got the recipe. <laughs> and you've got to get the recipe from God to make exactly what you need. The Lord was making it clear to Joshua, if Jericho is to fall, you're to have victory as my people. I must be the captain and the Lord of all, or not at all. That's what he's saying here. 
And folks, I'm telling you, he's got to be Lord of all. He's got to be our captain. We've got to be following him. We can't follow men. We can't follow the voices of men. We can't even follow the challenges of men. Because men don't know tomorrow. But Jesus does. Jesus even knows what's happening today if we don't know what's going on. Here he's saying, I did not come to help you. I came to win for you. Well, that's a blessed message in the hour we're in right now. He didn't come that, uh, to help us win. He said, I come to win for you. I'm the one that wins the battles, not you. I like that old song, he fought the battle and I won. Why? Because he's the one who can only fight the battles. We can't fight them. I know there's a, a lot of people who are upset and in a little rebellious mood. It's not time to be rebellious. It's a time to trust God. It's time to be peaceable among all men. It's time to trust the Lord and do things like Jesus would do it. Because that's when you win. You win when you do things the way Jesus would do things, not the way we would do things. Jesus said, I'll let you fight your own battles, but I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to empower you. Do you want to know why so many Christians today are defeated and discouraged? They're trying to fight their own battles. You can't fight your own battles. You've got to rest in the arms of the Lord and let him do the fighting for you. You see, he said, I want to be the captain. I want to be the boss. I want to be the controller. I want to be the Lord over your life. But we say the opposite. We say, I want to be the boss. I want to be the controller. But we don't know tomorrow. We don't even understand today, much less tomorrow. But God does. That's why he should be captain and Lord. You see, the problem today is what you and I want is to have our way. And if we decide we're going to have our way and not listen to God, God's not going to interfere. He's going to let you wreck your life. He's going to let you wreck your ministry. He'll let you wreck your family because you want to do that. He's not going to force himself on you. You've got to submit to his will, his word, and his way and let him have control. If you want to run your life, you go right ahead and help yourself. But you've got to pick up the pieces yourself when it's over. But if God runs your life, there are no pieces to pick up. Because you don't lose. You win. You have victory. When you make a fool out of yourself and mess your life up, don't come running to the Lord and think he's going to bail you out because you've already wrecked your life. You better go to the Lord before you wreck. You better trust him. You better give the reins to him. No sooner had the challenge to Joshua left the Savior's lips, Joshua was prostrate on his feet and worshiped to God. He fell on his feet before God, and he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. You see, there has to be tonight self-abandonment. If you're going to have God win the battle for you, there's going to have to be self-abandonment. You've got to abandon yourself and let God take over. Easy preaching. Hard living for all of us. Where do you find that? It's implied in the word worship. When you worship God, you acknowledge he is all, and then you yield yourself to his every command. You follow his every wish, his every promise, his every precept, his every principle. And when you do that, you'll never go wayward. You'll never go downward. There'll only be one direction you'll go, and that's upward. We have to come to the place we realize that we can't do it. We've got to abandon ourselves. I, I come to that conclusion a long time ago. Walter can't do it. But God can. Thank God he can. Jesus will, as the song said just a few minutes ago. Jesus will. I can't do it. I never could. But he can, and he said he would. What a blessing. I couldn't, but he could. I wouldn't, but he would. Oh, listen, let's give it to God today. Let's self-abandon ourselves. The voice was certainly to Joshua one of a challenge to be self-abandoning. Just worship God. Follow him completely. That's what we've got to do today. This is all the Lord really wants. He wants to be the head of your house, the head of your home, the head of your life. It should be 
I rule my house as he rules me. If you rule your house, you'll tear it down and rip it to shreds. But folks, when God's in control of our life, he leads us. The challenge tonight is self-abandonment. That's the first thing you got to do. Now, B, the voice was one of not only challenge, the voice was one of command. It was a challenge. You got to do this. And then the challenge comes with commands. Look at Joshua 15.5. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy, set apart. And Joshua did so. He did just exactly what he was commanded to do. He didn't question. He didn't quip. He didn't quarrel. But he absolutely gave into the command of God. Obedience to this command was a sign of point number two I want to share with you tonight. Not only self-abandonment, but if you can abandon yourself, then you can have self-abasement. That's when you put yourself under control of the Holy Spirit of God. The only way you put yourself under the control of the Holy Spirit of God is to obey Him. Every time you obey Him, you're yielding to His control. Every time you disobey Him, you're rebelling against God. The readiness to go all the way with God, no matter the cost, will lead you to obedience. If you do not humble yourself before God, you'll never take the first step with God, much less go all the way with Him. If you want to go all the way with God, you've got to take the first step with God. And that's obey Him. First of all, surrender to Him. And then submit to Him. Surrender and uh, self-abandonment, and then surrender in self-abasement. Put yourself under his control. Notice the last part of verse 15. And Joshua did so. He did what the Lord asked him. Even though he may not have understood it, he may not know why God asked him to do it, he did what he was told, what he was told, the way he was told, without saying a word. God says, take your shoes off, Joshua. And Joshua snapped to it, and he took his shoes off. Doing what someone else tells you to do is a sign of humility, power under control. Everybody's got the right to do what they want to do. But a wise man has the right to not do what he wants to do. A wise man has the right to surrender in humility to somebody smarter than he is, somebody more powerful than he is, somebody who can help him and not hurt him. You see, who you yield to is important. You're either going to yield to the lies of the devil or the truths of God, and you better yield to the truths of God. Refusing to do what someone tells you is a sign of pride. Putting yourself first and everybody else last. Before we ever know true victory in our life, we must loose all the baggage of pride and resistance. A lot of people say, there's nothing I, can, I cannot handle. Well, there's a lot of small bikes like that. I got news for you. There'll come a time when you're going to hit something that's going to hit you so hard you can't handle it. Two years ago, I ran into a, a brick wall called pneumonia, and I couldn't handle it. I ended up in the hospital. I thought, I'll never go to the hospital. Nobody ever make me go to the hospital, but they hauled my carcass right to Lynchburg General Hospital. They put me in the bed, and they worked on me to get me well. Because old Walter found out there was something in life he could not handle. And we're going to have to learn that in life there's some things we can't handle. But there's nothing God can't handle. If we will just submit to him and his word and do what he says, he'll take care of those walls. This, this coronavirus thing is going to be tough. Nobody's going to lie to you. But we can make it through it with grace. And in the end, we can get the victory if we'll obey him and trust him and live for it. Listen, we must realize we cannot handle anything. I've seen many a strong man put down on his back like a 90-pound weakling by sickness, by disease. He knew then there was something that he could not handle. And there's some things you can't handle. But remember, there's nothing our precious Savior can't handle. And he will, like that song the Wilburn sang, and he will. The challenge is self-abasement. The command I'm sorry, self-abandonment. The command is self-abasement, putting God first above others and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, number three, 
The voice was one of counsel. The voice was one of counsel. The Bible says very clearly that counsel is from God. If you want some wisdom, come to God. The Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is called self-adjustment. When God gives you counsel and you see something you need to change, you better adjust it. You better make that adjustment. Joshua could not do it the way he had always done it before. It wasn't going to work this time. He had to adjust the fact that it had to be done God's way. And as the book of Joshua unfolds, you begin to see each battle was different. And God handled each battle, each city a different way. There was no battle the same. And there's no battle in your life that's ever going to be the same. That's why you need God. God's going to do it different every time. That's what blows my mind about church people say, we ain't never done it this way. Well, if God's in control, it ain't going to never be done the same way. It's always going to be done differently. It's always going to be done so we can't get the glory, and he gets all the glory, and that's the way it should be. We're trying to adjust to God, and we're trying to agree with God. We try to make God understand sometimes our desire to live with the unholy manner. God doesn't understand that. He never has, and he never will understand that. Certainly God would understand, and God would come around to my way of thinking. I've heard people say time and time again, well, I know God will give me an exception because God understands the predicament I'm in. That's a lie of the devil to get you to do it his way. God doesn't change his way of doing things. God doesn't make exceptions to the rules. God is not a respecter of persons, as the Bible clearly says. The Bible is true. we got to adjust to him. So if you're going through a problem and you think you can take a shortcut and God will just let you slide, you better wake up and smell the coffee. You're going to get a high end whooping like you ain't never seen. Because you, you've got to adjust to God, not God adjust to you. Important to understand that tonight. God does not adjust to our standards. We justify everything in our heart. But we've got to justify everything before God's sight, not your heart. It's not your heart. It's the sight of God you've got to justify yourself in. Oh, listen. The line of reasoning we use will not stand up at the judgment seat of Christ. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to tell God when I get to heaven. You're going to tell God anything. You're going to be on your face. It's best to be on your face now making adjustments than on your face then when it's too late to make adjustments. We've got to make those changes now to do it his way and do it in his, his will. Circumstances have no credence or credibility in God's courtroom. Did you hear what your preacher just said? Circumstances have no credence or credibility in God's courtroom. Only the, uh, the principles of his word. Every time people go to the court, they say, well, I'm going to explain to the judge my circumstances. I'm going to explain to the judge the situation I'm in. And the judge hits the gavel and don't pay a bit of attention to him. You know why? Because it's not their circumstances or situation that he has to make his judgment by. It's the law of the land that he has to make his judgment by. And when you get to heaven, it's going to be the word of God. That's why it's so important to know the Bible and know the word of God now and understand that. We must be led and guided by the truth. No matter how much it hurts, no matter how tough the adjustment is, we have to make them and we have to come close to God so we can have his power because there's nothing better than having the power of God in your life and watching God work a miracle through your vessel. Nothing better. But it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you self-abandonment. It's going to cost you self-abasement. And it's going to cost you self-adjustment. You're going to have to adjust. The doctor looked at me in the hospital and said, Big boy, you've got to change your ways. Are you going to the funeral home? I said, I think I'll make the adjustment. I think I'll make the change. I don't want to go to that funeral home. I want to live. I want to live and serve God. But then I had to make some adjustments. And we all have to make adjustments when we look at the Word of God and follow the Scriptures. No matter how unprofitable it may be to me and you. No matter how uncomfortable it may be to me and you. No matter how unpopular it might be with the people around us. 
None of these problems erase the fact that God is still God and everything must be his way or it won't be at all. We've got to surrender. Once we've yielded to God's revelation through his son Jesus Christ and humbly promised to go all the way with him through obedience, then there's no more important issue than this question of daily counsel from the Lord. Every day you're going to need to hear from God. Every day you're going to have to pray and open your heart up to God and then open his word and hear from him and listen to his counsel. But not only listen, learn it and then live it. Listen, learn, and live his counsel and make those adjustments and victory won't be far down the road, I promise you. He said, Joshua, on six days, I want you to do this, and on the seventh day, I want you to do that. And Joshua said, that don't sound kosher. We need arsenals, and we need weapons, we need a secret plan. Jesus said, no, you go down, you march around Jericho every day, and walk back. Six days. Walk around Jericho, go back, walk around Jericho. Then people, Jericho said, them people crazy. People look at the church and say, them people crazy. But we're doing what God said do, not what people said do. And on the seventh day, he said, I want you to go now walk seven times around. And on that seventh time, I want you to blow the trumpet. And that's all he told them. He didn't make them, didn't make them a promise the walls were going to fall. He said, just do what I said do. God is not going to bless you until you believe him without having to have a conclusion. And Joshua and Israel did what he said. One day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoop! Blew the horns and the walls fell flat. Hey, who needs a bomb when you got the Lord? Who needs weapons and surprise? Hey, I don't think there's any greater surprise than when those walls fell flat. I expect a bunch of them died from a heart attack and fear. Listen, folks, God's ways are not man's ways. Just do what he says do. And their walls will fall flat. The enemy will be defeated. We will win and get the victory. That's the key. You're not called to analyze God's plan. You're called to obey it. We better adjust our thinking to do it God's way. His counsel to Joshua was perfect. Look at Joshua chapter 6 and verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of the ram's horns. And on the seventh day, you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Notice seven, seven, seven. Seven's the number of completion. It's the number of completion. If Joshua had only done it six times, the walls would have never fell down. Let me, let me warn you about something tonight. A lot of Christians go six, but they never make it to number seven. And they miss the best God has for them. They miss the victory because they didn't go all the way with the Lord. You've got to go all the way with the Lord. You've got to do everything he says all the time until the victory comes. And when it comes, oh, victory is going to be sweet. If the only six priests had blown those trumpets, the walls would still be standing today. He had the perfect plan. What's the lesson? In all things, Christ must have the preeminence. He is the seven. He is the completion. Follow him. Obey the Lord. I love that old song. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The challenge is self-abandonment. You've got to give up on yourself and trust God. The command is self-abasement, putting God first above yourself. It's never always what you want. It's always what God wants and doing what he says do. And then third, there's the voice of counsel begging us to make those self-adjustments. I don't know what adjustments you need to make tonight. I don't know what changes you need to make, but the Bible will tell you. If you'll listen, learn he's right. And live it and obey it. Oh my goodness, the Lord 
Well, bless you in such a mighty way. But we're so stubborn, we don't want to do that. Listen, don't let stubbornness and rebellion, which is a sin of witchcraft, devil worship, stop you from going, enjoying God's best. He's got something for you that you've never imagined if you just trust him and obey him. You have got to abandon you. You have got to be a base and do what God says do. And you've got to adjust when God tells you to do what he says do, the, exactly the way he says do it. And when you trust and obey, the Bible says, Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? First of all, if you're out there tonight and you've never trusted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I pray tonight that you'll believe what it says in the book of Romans, chapter 10. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believe in the righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Right where you are right now, pray this prayer if you want to trust Christ. Say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus shed his blood, died, was buried, and rose again as payment for my sins. The best I know how, I turn from sin to the Savior. And I ask Jesus to save me right now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, Lord, help me live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. If you just prayed that prayer, would you do me a favor? Would you take time to go to our contact page on Eternal Broadcasting? Or if you're on Facebook, send Ken a message right now. Leave us your name and address. Let us send you some information to help you get started on your new life in Christ. Christian, did God tell you today you need to self-abandon? Did God tell you today you need to self-adjust? Did God tell you today that you need to take time to trust Him, to abandon, to take time to abase, and then adjust to Him, to do it His way? Surrender to Him today. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. Surrender to him. And I guarantee you, not too far hence, the walls are going to come down and the victory is going to be yours. Thanks for taking time to be with us today at Timberlake Baptist Church on Facebook Live and on uh, Eternal Broadcasting or whether you're on the telephone. Please let us know you're there. Contact us and uh, let us know that the message has been a blessing to you. We hope to see you Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 945 We'll be concluding our Sunday school lesson on humility. I hope you'll join us, and we're praying for you during this tough time. Amen. It was a great blessing to hear God's word tonight. We hope that it really touched you tonight, and we hope that you apply what you heard tonight to your daily lives. Uh, I, was in, I couldn't help but sit back there and just think how I know how the preacher does his messages and stuff. Uh, there was, this, this message was no accident. He does them about a month in advance, and I think that this message is right on time for tonight. So I just pray that tonight that you uh, just just apply to what you learn to your lives. Also, let's, uh, just a few reminders uh, that we will not be having uh, uh, BBI tomorrow, but BBI students, you will be able to have your... Uh, uh, lessons available for you uh, in your uh, inbox on Friday morning, so we'll be looking for that. And also, please tune back in on Sunday morning uh, and listen to Sunday school at 945, and we have morning worship service at 11, and Sunday night service at 6 p.m. We look forward to uh, hearing God's words at those times as well. Uh, with all that being said, let's be closing the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day you gave us, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you so much for allowing us to hear your word tonight, Lord. We're so thankful in, in that we live in a day and age, Lord, uh, that we can still get your word out to people, Lord. We ask you to please us, but every person that is listening, that who will listen to this message, Lord, I pray that it will just be a blessing to them and that they will just continue just to strive for your goodness and your glory, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to please be with us all, Lord, because we need to be your hands and feet more than ever in the day and age that we live in, Lord. Lord, I ask you to please uh, be with us, Lord, and just bless us and just help us to fulfill your will for our lives, Lord. And and we love you and thank you for all you do. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.